All right, I'm here in storage today to look at uh, some of these lamps that uh, we actually got um, gifted to us when we were doing the Barrett Room uh, initially, and we weren't sure which lamps we wanted to use. They were from uh, overage from a construction project uh, in the Bay Area. So somebody donated all these great lamps, um, but we don't need them all, but we could use the money from the sales of these lamps if we can uh, you know, put them on uh, eBay or some local buy and sell or something like that. So I'm gonna look at these and uh, this great old Singer sewing machine. If you've seen my other channel, you know how I'm about Singer sewing machines, but uh, what I really wanna do is bring this in and see if it's suitable for working on a quilt project that I would like to have an annual quilt that we're gonna raffle off at the end of the year. Uh, as part of a fundraiser. So um, that's what I'm doing today is looking at these lamps among other tasks. I mean, you know, they are admittedly, hello, <laughs> may or may not work inside of our antique museum setting. Um, and we decided that uh, some of these just weren't going to do it. So I'm researching what exactly they are uh, and then what their value is, you know, so that we can uh, list them for a fair price and then hopefully you know get something for some of these because right now every dollar helps this is will it run let's see i've already found the info on this guy uh it's one of these sphinx models and i think the last time i played with this it does run it does seem to, yep, yeah, needle goes up and down, yay. Um, it needs oiling. It's got, uh, it is a treadle. It does have one of these uh, small type of uh, bobbins. The bobbin cover is in here. Let's see. Yep, yeah, I mean, it. it's it's in bad need of, of lubrication, but the the bobbin is in here. Man. Now, come on now. I just want to change the bobbin. Um, bobbin winders up here. This is your stitch tension. Uh, decals are in decent shape. I should be able to lift this up. There we go. Ugh. Bugs and little pins and such as per usual. Oh, a whole little raft of baby spider carcasses. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it aligns up, and that's one of the important things. You know, maybe I have to have this up in order to get this out. Maybe it won't come out if the needle's in a certain position. Doesn't seem to have made a difference. Well, probably it'll work. Um, yeah, I gotta do more research on this model. It is, the accession number is, all right, here for this part, 8312-1A, I happen to know that the rest of, there's another number on the underside of the cabinet that's probably 1B. Uh, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it looks like it's in working condition, so. That's my plan for this, is to get this into the museum and operating and sewing an actual quilt on it. Okay, soap and let. Well, I know there's like some kind of a saddle soap. Well, yeah, but I mean, regular to get regular dirt off, you can use ivory soap and water. But what you have to do on these, and I've got all my products with me today. Okay, this is regular old saddle soap. Yeah, yeah. And it, this is the glycerin one because I ran out of this. It's literally one. just That's, a bar in there, yeah. Yeah, I just threw the bar in here because uh -huh. the other one is, is just a yellow. Right. Okay. Then, when things get bad, you can use <laughs> mink oil. Mink oil, all right. Conditions and waterproofs. Right. What I'm gonna use today, and this, this is, is what I used on the seats. Right, now, you if said you they look re here, responded well to the product. This one is in, you feel it's in pretty bad shape. Right, this gotcha. is worse. If you even touch that, <laughs> it, oop, it, see it breaks. Yeah. yeah that one's gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, there's not shot. a darn thing I can do to help it. No, no, yeah. I guess. <laughs> but these kind of seats wreck, yeah. were well, good. like that. Protected by the roof, maybe, which is unfortunately some I used some my high rejuvenator here. last week. Uh -huh. 
but I washed them with soap and water. I didn't right. even use salad soup. I just used some soap and water mm -hmm. to get that dirt off. Mm -hmm. And then I took my hide rejuvenator. Great. And I put it on. So it's a little dusty today. I was just kind of starting to wipe the dust off yeah, to great. see what my product had done. So you can tell the difference between here and oh, yeah. here and up here. Well, like this is just, you know. See, so, that's gone too. Yeah, that's, this is just like little. And that's what I'm saying. Pieces and then up of here, <laughs> yeah. when I was watching the man from uh, Texas, uh -huh. he restores the Surrey tops. And oh. you take these off, this, uh -huh. you unbolt it, you set it on the ground. Okay. Now he used leather, but I don't know what's up there because I don't want to be climbing on this. I don't oh, know. Oh, of course. It yeah. Is. So I don't know what the, what they yeah. used, but Could this be one, a reinforced this, canvas, maybe. That's what I was kind of thinking, and then of course it's got the board mm -hmm. uh, frame, mm -hmm. which you know I don't mind trying to tackle, but we'll have to wait and see if the board wants to spend money on this or not. Yeah, I'll just do what I can. Gonna be a hot minute for that, I'll tell you. You know, but I mean, I'll do what I can. Yeah, but great. as far as that, I we would have to, you know, and like I said, even Ray was saying, he says, well, mm -hmm. he says, if we can't loosen this, he said he'd probably have to go in with a grinder nah. and maybe cut it off, nah, tap I it bet out. We could, I bet we could get that off of there. Get so, some of that liquid wrench maybe or maybe something. But he was saying, maybe even a, he's an old, he's mm -hmm. a retired machinist, so he knows his metals mm -hmm. very well. And I call on him for all my help on that right. kind of stuff. But here, what I was thinking of doing, and as you know, what? back in the day they didn't have shiny metal anywhere mm. because it was going to rust so they painted everything black so i brought okay. my little uh brushes and i'm just going to just oh, yeah. rub those up a little bit and see how it looked and then get some mm -hmm. primer yeah yeah and just paint on some black equipment paint yeah that might save that yeah but yeah, our big cool. problem yeah is, is going to be here and keeping it safe, we gotta put some kind of something yeah. over these vehicles because that yeah. sweaty roof. Yeah, situation. and it does, you know, and especially when the the temperature changes, like in the fall and mm -hmm. the spring. You're right. It's really bad, and I didn't realize it was like that because I come in and everything looks dry, and I'm fine, and the floor is dry. And every every single day that I came in in January, February, March, whenever I was doing those doors. Right. There was water everywhere. Gee. Yeah, there was water everywhere. Yeah, oh, and then these here, now you can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. This one here, I put just a little hide rejuvenator oh, on great. it last week, and I'm going to put more. That one, I only got partially oh. done, and then I had to go in and be a docent. Oh, all right. So I didn't get that one done. So right. today. So, like underneath, it's all kind of. Mm -hmm. So, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my sponge out and I'm going to. Um, wash it down a little better mm -hmm. and I put some good hide rejuvenator on there. In interest of, of repainting this, I would go ahead and just take that off but set it aside so we can make a pattern, right? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, when we do have a little extra cash, well, we can... we may not be able to make a pattern. Mm. We might have to soak that in water to even... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's destroyed anyway, so yeah, however it, it can be really... made into a pattern, it'd be great. Because yeah. have have really that. all it is is to keep the horse poop and the dirt and everything from coming up and hitting the rider's feet, sure. or the driver's feet. So really, it's only about like this, and that's yeah. not a big deal. No, no. Pressure washer, but it's gas powered and I can't even start it. Because I honestly think on Delicate, that's all that sucker needs. We even looked inside the back and yeah. the velvet and everything is still good, except the mud wasps have gone in there a little bit. Your really body's right. <laughs> no. I mean, it's really in good shape. I, I don't see anything big deal. Oh, look at the rollers like the, for rolling. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, right? It's not a bad, I don't think it's in bad shape. I don't. Go ahead. I'm going to hold that open. Yeah. That's great. See, yeah. I mean, I it's really, that, yeah, the fabric seems fine. It's not like I it's shattering. One, yeah. I think this one's just going to take a little bit of elbow grease because even if you look here at the paint, it's not a, it's not in that bad of shape. Yeah, and the roof looks good. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, not water damaged or anything. So yeah, it's no. a great piece. It's I just mean, so fun. Geez. Just such an impressive piece, and it's so well preserved. The colors are beautiful. 
you know? Just a little. And they shoved the surrey up against the arm. Yeah, I saw kind of, that. Kind of weird, huh? Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Who comes in here and wreaks havoc with the uh, place? Right? It's like, why, why is anybody monkeying with stuff in here at all? And I have seen pictures of this fire truck in the parade. Yes. So I know it, it ran not that long ago. Yes. Yes. That'd be great to get that going again. That would be. See, that's the kind of thing I bet you could tell somebody, hey, we need a volunteer. Does anybody want to? I want to get this old fire truck going. And some guy is going to be like, oh, yeah, I didn't know you needed help with that. Sure, you know, that's great. And yeah. That's just the kind of thing. One thing I also did was mop this entire floor. Not that you can tell any difference because you didn't get a before picture, but trust me, <laughs> this is a million times better than it was. The buckets and buckets of, uh, of, you know, dirty mop water. It actually looks like a respectable floor over here. All right. And uh, I don't think this floor was mopped since we opened it uh, last uh, August. And what that was causing was uh, there was so much dust in here because actually the ceiling, interestingly, has got about uh, two or three feet of dirt up on top of those timbers. And that was a gold rush method of uh, fire protection. But I think what's going on is some of that dirt is very slowly filtering down, but uh, it's definitely better after I mopped. I'm gonna come back and mop again because mopping uh, and, and just, you know, dusting and just trying to keep this dust down. Some of it gets in through uh, this door here. It's obviously locked from the other side, but um, you know, dust will filter in from the roadside through the crack in this door. It's just, you know, living up here, I mean, my own house is dusty as heck because of that, because I have a dirt walkway between the car and my house, so dirt just gets tracked in. And the next thing is mopping this room, <laughs> another wood floor room that hasn't been mopped in a very, very long time, so that's contributing to the dust problem. Oh, so much dust. Lynn has found a wonderful picture of the Garbarino family and holding grapes. They're very, very proud of their grapes and it's wonderful because it ties in with our ag exhibit. I've been trying to research uh, the local families that had, uh, you know, fruit orchards, vineyards, all of that. I talked about that in a previous episode of this show. Uh, and the Garbarino Gardens is what it was called, Garbarino Gardens, um, got cut in half by Highway 49. You can see, well, there's the highway going off to the south there. That pointy building right there is uh, part of the Garbarino House and Garbarino Gardens was right there, and it is now pretty much gone. There's a few old heritage trees at the Garbarino House itself, um, but the gardens, as you saw in the photo, are now not there. It looks like they were probably facing that direction for the photograph, uh, you know, facing south, and then the photo was taken kind of as the hills go. Well, here, I'll walk out here. As the hills go, kind of slanting down that direction. That's get the idea of where Garbarino Gardens was. And that's part of what I'm researching is what varieties of grapes are they? Uh, we were going to plant in the acreage, uh, the heritage plants, the, the varieties that uh, some are still being grown today, like, um, was it Bartlett pears? And some are very, very rare and some are extinct. But uh, the rare ones and, and the common ones, we want to plant uh, the heritage roses, we want to plant uh, you know, grapes and olives and oranges and apples and everything that was grown here that we can find out about, that we have information about, is what we're going to be doing in the acreage behind the building. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's what our gift shop looks like now. Yay! It's, you know, still a work in progress, but much, much better. Uh, lots of fun things in the case. There are going to be more fun things coming soon. The books are there, the postcards are there. Oh, and then uh, Helen found, uh, well, I found these guys up in the attic, these postcards. Why were they there? Why weren't they out here? I don't know. And then um, this is actually VC Pepper, Pep, Placer Gold Mining, Colterville, California. We have a giant 
stack of these. So you can get these actual vintage cards for the cheap price of only $4 a piece. Um, but yeah, this is, a, <laughs> I think Pepper probably did these himself. So I think that'll about do it for another week at the museum. Subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. And come to the museum. Come to the Northern Mariposa County History Center. We are at the corner of Highways 49 and 132, right in the town of Coulterville, right behind Whistling Billy, the little engine. You cannot miss us. Um, and, and come experience the museum for yourself. I'm here most Fridays. Uh, you can ask me questions, AMA, <laughs> in the comments. And when you're here, hopefully you will come here. So I will see you again next time on Museums from the Inside Out. Thanks for watching.